We're going to use the rectangle tool and the ellipse tool to make a bottle and then use the line tool to do a bit of a schematic for that bottle. So to start, I'll choose File, New Document. I'll uncheck Facing Pages and make the width 5 and press Tab and the height 7. I'll keep it to one column and I'll keep it to half inch margins. Regardless of whether I do a bleed, I always add the bleed guides and slug is an area for job specific notes. So I'll click Save Preset and call this 5 by 7 half inch so I know my margins. I'll click OK, click OK again, and I'll start with the ellipse tool or I could hit the letter L for ellipse. I'll come to the top middle and create the mouth of the bottle. You can estimate the size that the smart guides are showing me. The width is 0.44, roughly, and the height an eighth of an inch, 0.125. I can hit the letter M for marquee to go back to the rectangle tool. Photoshop was the first product I taught and M is the marquee tool in Photoshop, which is a rectangle. I'll start at the left edge of my ellipse and I'll click and drag down, noting that the smart guides are showing me green arrows. That means my ellipse is matching the width of my rectangle for the neck of the bottle. I'll let go, hit L for ellipse, or you can click and hold for two seconds and switch to the ellipse tool. You can also right click and it will bring up the nested or hidden tools underneath. Now with the ellipse, I have to start up and to the left. I try to imagine the bounding box I'll see around the ellipse when I let go. Let me show you. I'll click and drag. And as I'm dragging here, when I let go, that was my start point. But I was a little off anyway. That's all right. I'm going to use the Align panel to align this perfectly. I'll hit M to go back to the Marquee or Rectangle tool, but in my head I say M for Marquee because that's a shortcut I learned early. I'll click and drag, and I always tend to estimate this wrong, so I'll go a little bit off the page and let go. And now I'll go to my Selection tool. Earlier, I have brought up the Align panel, but if you don't have it up, if you're on the typography workspace and it's in its factory settings, under Window, Object and Layout is Align. And on the Selection tool, I hit Command A or Control A or choose Edit Select All, and I'll hit the button to Align Horizontal Centers. Now to finish this off, to make it look like one bottle that I drew from scratch, I'm going to go to Pathfinder, and in Pathfinder, I'm going to hit the first button in the second row to add or combine all the selected objects into one final shape. And there, if I click away, you could see a nice bottle. I'll click back on it and scale it down, and I'm not even going to bother to use Shift because a lot of times I like to eyeball this to make the bottle wider or thinner or taller. And when I'm finished, I'm going to go to the double column toolbar because it gives me a bigger target for fill and stroke, stroke being the outline. I want no outline on this bottle, so I will swap the colors to get a black fill. And I'll dock the Align and Pathfinder panel to the bottom of my panel group by dragging it down here until the arrow gets there. Many people watch the edges of a panel as they're dragging, but the important thing to watch is your arrow, the black arrow. When that gets in the right spot, it's safe to let go. And I have a color recipe in my head, so I'm going to choose Window, Color, and the Color panel. And if you Learn color recipes, you can always control it. I call it cooking color, learning my favorite recipes. In fact, early on, I had a 
Pantone to Process Color Guide where I'd look up the formula for the color and then just type it in. Those are excellent and there are many of them available online. I'll hit the panel menu and this is a print job so I'm going to choose CMYK. The panel menu is the four lines with the down arrow. And I'll start with cyan and make it 100. Magenta I'll leave it 0. And I'm pressing tab to go from the cyan field to the magenta field down to the yellow field. I'll do 100 for yellow and I'll do 60 for black. And when I do the 60, I'm going to press return or enter to see the color. And I'll scoot the bottle over a bit. And I like to dock color in with stroke and gradient. So I'm nesting all three panels into one panel group. Now I'll use the line tool to do a simple schematic. With the line tool, I'm going to start at the top middle on the bottle and click and drag. And I can use my shift key if I want to make sure that it doesn't go crooked, that the line stays perfectly straight. And once that line is drawn on the stroke panel on the right side of your screen, I can actually make it thicker. I'll make the weight three points. There you could see it better. Under Start, I'll actually choose the curved or arrowhead style. And I want this a little bit fancier. So under Type, I'll choose either dotted or Japanese dots, a little closer together. I like the dotted, but here are many custom built-in line styles. You can also get to all of these options up here on your control panel. The line color itself, the line style, and the line weight is here, so I could click my down arrow or up arrow to make it thinner or thicker. And what I'm going to do is go back to the Selection tool and hold down Option or Alt as I drag down to make a copy. Option or Alt drag always makes a copy. I let go of my mouse first. In fact, when I hold down Option or Alt, I add Shift into that and it won't move left or right. It keeps it straight. So we'll dissect several parts of the bottle, holding down Option or your Alt key the entire time. And for this last one, I'll nudge it up just a hair. Now I'll finish this off by going to my Type tool, creating a text box, and I'll type Mouth. I'll do a Select All, and I'll change my font to Myriad Pro, Regular, Size 12, Kerning, Optical. Optical just gives me better letter spacing. I'll go back to my selection tool and I will hold down again Option or Alt to make several copies of this. And the smart guides let me know if I'm lining it up to the existing spot. Then I'll double click to name the other parts of the bottle. This would be the neck double click, this is the shoulder, double click, this is the label panel, and then finally double click at the very bottom, that is the seat. To finish this all up, I will select with my shift key all of the text boxes, and then once they're all selected, I can make sure the text is centered up and down or vertically in the box. If each is centered vertically, now I can select the line and select the text and use my Align panel to center the text box to the line itself by hitting Align Vertical Centers. And usually when I'm finished, I'll group each label with its proper arrow so that they move as one unit. I need to align them before I do that. So now, Object Group, select these two, Object Group, or you'll see the shortcut was Control G on Windows or Command G on the Mac. So if I want to align any of these, when I click away, 
If I click on the neck and move it up or down, both pieces select and move together. And that is our very elementary introduction to shapes and lines, setting your line weight, applying line styles to make a simple schematic of a bottle that you've drawn from scratch.